Hey everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about DMT, tell you guys about my first experience with it and stuff. Now, um, it's kind of a continuation from my last video. The guy I dropped LSD with, Ramel, learned about DMT before me and he started telling me about it. Um, so, once I learned about it, I was completely intrigued. I really, really wanted to experience it. Uh, so I made it my mission to find some, and that mission took months and months and months, literally like four or five times a week. I'd be asking people, do you know where I can get DMT? Do you know a guy who knows a guy who can get DMT? You know, and I was always getting that, yeah, I can get you some, I know where to get some. could never find it. One day, I finally found it. Long story short, really long story short, I found it. <laughs> and uh, so I said, all right, let's do this. Uh, I called... The guy in my last video, Ramel, I figured since we both tried LSD for the first time together, we'll try DMT. So he's like, okay, I'm down. So he comes over. <clears throat> we try it. Now, we didn't really know what we were doing. We didn't know dosage or, you know, proper techniques and stuff like that. So we, we had a great time, but we didn't have the full experience. So it really wasn't until the next morning that I had a full experience, and I'll tell you guys about it. Uh, it's about five in the morning, I wake up, everybody's asleep. So I figure, let's try it out again. And uh, I used the sandwich technique my very first time. I discussed it in my first video. It's where you put DMT between weed and a bowl. And <clears throat> so I do that, and I have it all set and ready, and I'm gonna do it. I sit down and I immediately have to piss. So I go take a piss and then I come back and I sit down. I'm just completely nervous and then I see something in the back that doesn't, just, it's not right. So I go fix it and then I come back, sit down, get nervous again, have to piss. And then finally I'm like, stop being a bitch. Let's do it. So I sit back and I put in some headphones and I listen to 1200 micrograms, a song of theirs called Ayahuasca. And just push play and finally, Take the first rip. The first rip tastes just like weed, so I wouldn't really even count it. And then the second hit, I can taste the DMT. In my first video on how to smoke DMT, I keep kicking myself in the ass for not mentioning this, because it made it seem so easy. DMT's bitter, it tastes nasty, it's horrible, it really burns. So if you watch my last video, just keep that in mind. But so then that's exactly what happened. I take that first really hard rip and I'm holding it in as long as I can. I remember having to rock back and forth just trying to take my mind off of you know the nastiness in my lungs. So finally I blow it out <clears throat> and after that first hit, it's like everything's more obvious. Terrence, the way Terrence McKenna described it, all the air has left the room. Things become more round, more sharper, more detailed and that's exactly what I was like whoa music sounded more crisp so <clears throat> take another rip as hard as I can and uh, I think it took me about four rips to break through the second hit once I blew it out everything became like connected like pattern like almost super Mario like blockiness like so hard to explain colorful and like fucking like a 10 second tracer and like third rip, I was seeing like this floral pattern. <clears throat> this floral pattern was everywhere. Anywhere I looked was just this pattern. And it is very, almost probably is what I was seeing was the flower of life. This is before I even knew what the flower of life was. Uh, but I was seeing that pattern everywhere. So I take one more really hard, as hard as I can, and I close my eyes. I'm still seeing this pattern, but it's more psychedelic, more colorful, more clear. And I'm holding this in, holding this in, and when I blow it out, it's like it opened. Like it kind of came closer to me and like opened. And when I opened, it was just this light and there was a tunnel. I was like in a tunnel with eyes down it. Alex Gray depicted it in a painting very, very closely what I saw. And I printed it out for you. It's black and white because my I don't own a printer, so I had to do it at work, so bear the fuck with me. This is closely along the lines of what I saw. A tunnel, 
eyes all around it and a bright light right at the end. I'm just flying down it. Alex Gray is such a beast. Uh, so I'm flying down it. Once I hit the end, boom. It was just like I was rocket propelled into another realm, another dimension. Not far the fuck away from this place, but just this complete place of unimaginable beauty, unimaginable power. In this place, I've heard, I think Joe Rogan described it like this, time and space does not exist. And that is the one of the best ways to describe it. If this place feels like you've been there a hundred times before, like you've been, like it's a familiar like, okay, feeling, but I was rocket propelled out of it. Like I was flying like at hyperspeed and there's just all this going on around me. And this place is just arteries along the wall that are throbbing with energy and pumping with lights and the most unimaginable colors everywhere. There's geometrical patterns everywhere. Everything is connected. It's like I'm flying over a city and the buildings are changing and they're just this complete interdimensional vast network of fractal buildings. It's the craziest shit. And I'm flying over it and I'm flying so fast it feels like I'm on a roller coaster and I start to freak out like, what the fuck? It's, and then this voice, like a motherly voice. Like, I didn't actually see an entity on my first time, but... I heard a presence speaking to me. Don't freak out, it says. Don't freak out. You're okay. You're with us. Don't freak out. And I'm just like totally blown away by what the fuck I'm seeing. Because this isn't DMT. It's not like a hallucination. It's not like you think it's real. Like you really feel like you. this is a full 100% experience that you feel, you hear, you think, you taste, you smell, you everything. It's just all happening right there. And you're into this kaleidoscopic realm of unfathomable power and just complete mind boggling beauty. And the voice is just telling me, don't freak out. Don't just calm down. So I, I calm down and I'm like, okay. And I'm just flying over this geometric, it's like sacred geometry made in like the third, fourth, ninth fucking dimension. And you're flying and I'm just in this place and I'm just having this beautiful connection with everything. I am everything. I am the world. I am the universe. I am the cosmos. I am everything. I am part of the master plan. I, I, I have the giant piece of the puzzle in my hands and I'm running around. And it's just this complete sense of love, love, love is the word, love is, is the, you just feel like you don't want it to end. You just, you come back and it's so, it's real short. You know, that's what happened. I was flying, you know, this voice is telling me to calm down and I finally calmed down and I just take in its beauty and I just. It's, I'm speechless. I can't say anything. I can't do anything. I'm just flying through this beautiful maze. Just this wonderful, wonderful place. This place is the most... It's like heaven. And you come back and everything's still wah, wah, moving around and like still seeing patterns and you're like, what the fuck? So when I got out of it, I was like, whoa, I need to tell someone about this. So I run in and tell my girlfriend what the fuck happened. And I was like, tell my friends about it. So we tried again. And then the second time I broke through, it was the time I met my first being. Like I actually saw it. And that was pretty surreal. Uh, same thing, you know, ripped it through the bubbler, took as many tokes as I could. Finally broke through flying. And there was like these like, like triangle lines like everywhere along the walls and like, they were just like flashing colors and wonderful likeness and this head like this weird being. I can't even describe what it looked like. Definitely just this weird looking thing. And it, it had a head. It was like elongated. And it had a giant eye as long with like two eyes and you could see its mouth. And it was it blended in with the background of this realm. Like it just like appeared of energy and started like speaking to me in a language that wasn't English, but it was a language I could understand. And it wasn't speaking like I'm speaking. It was more like 
as if it was doing this. And then whatever I'm thinking, you can hear in your head audibly. That's pretty much it. And it just was, and I, I remember saying, who are you? And it was just speaking to me and it was telling me exactly who he was and it was telling me exactly why he's there and what he's doing and what's going on and like all, you know, he was giving me a piece of the master plan. He was telling me everything, the meaning of life, if you would, and come back into the realm and you immediately forget or can't even fathom what they were really even saying. And I feel like the treasures you find in that DMT realm are is something you can't bring back to this earth. That's why you forget most of the DMT experience. And it's seriously the most profound, beautiful fucking experience I've ever had. I was never a spiritual person or anything like that. I did not believe in a higher power. And I can solely blame DMT for change, shifting that belief. Um, I, I've never had an out-of-body experience or anything that absolutely fantastic put it that way like seriously that literally it literally changed my life and it makes me think too if dmt has ex has existed for you know thousands of years with ayahuasca and you know it being in many different plants throughout the world like it just makes me wonder about different things throughout history that seem to be psychedelically triggered i'll give you an example like one of my biggest thoughts towards that area, if you understand what I'm saying, is with the story of Moses. Moses going into the mountains alone, experiencing God, and coming back and telling his people what, he, what God has told him. And, you know, coming back with tablets, stone tablets of way, the way the world should be. You shouldn't lie to each other. You shouldn't kill each other. This and that and this and that. It's just a complete structure of love and, and, and acceptance coming down and no one knows what the fuck that is that's I mean many people can interpret it their own way it was God it was this it was that it was this no Moses went into the fucking desert found a plant that contained DMT did something with it and he had uh, in a little while later had a plant that had an MAOI <laughs> boom full on ayahuasca experience coming down telling his family telling his friends, telling all of his people what he saw, makes you wonder, could it be psychedelic mushrooms have existed for God knows how long? This, I mean, Terrence McKenna with the stoned ape theory is a wonderful theory. I love thinking that that is where we come from. That's how our consciousness exists, is with the help of, of psilocybin mushrooms and stuff like that. But it's just seriously the most unforgettable experience and you have and you once you get out of it you tell everyone about it you can't stop talking about it like when i had my first dmt trip i realized i gotta tell as many people about this mainly why i created this youtube channel and stuff like that i want to get my voice out there i want to get my thoughts out there i want to tell people about my experiences if you are looking for this substance if you're interested in experiencing this go out and find it do what i did and don't give up a lot of people ask me you know do you know where i can get dmt can you help me find dmt and i can't i really can't i wish i could but my advice to you is is one extract it yourself i'm not much of a chemistry guy from, from what i understand it's pretty easy uh two just put yourself out there let your freak flag fly as i told someone uh go out to as many people and just ask you know try to find it be smart about it, but try to find it. And I hope it finds you guys. But uh, I guess I'll call this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, the next time I get DMT, I'm going to do a live DMT. So I'm going to try my hardest to break through and do it all on camera. Come back and tell you exactly what I saw. So that should be happening soon. Um, we have some. I have some other cool stuff planned out. But thank you guys for watching. Uh, smoke DMT.